Hey, welcome back. Have you seen the movie Limitless? If you haven't, it's a movie starring Bradley Cooper about this artist slash writer who is trying to finish a book, but just can't get it done. His ex-brother-in-law, who is also a sketchy drug dealer, gives him this mysterious spill. This drug completely changes his life. He writes the book, learns languages. Wait, what's the point to all of this? So there's this video by Letter Corporation. It's called, Can Chat GPT Help Me Make a Full Godot Game? Honestly, it's a great video. Letter uses Chat GPT to assist building a game from scratch. But then this comment popped up. Using AI means you're a bad programmer. And look, I don't want to start beef in the comments, but I strongly disagree. Is AI really that bad? I guess if I were a professional programmer and felt AI was threatening my job, then sure, I might get a little nervous. But here's the thing. I truly believe there's no way AI can replace human programmers, especially when it comes to creativity. Not now, and maybe not ever. So in this video, I want to break this down. Is using AI cheating? Is it lazy? Or is it like taking NCT 48, that fictional brain boosting pill, but without its side effect? Let's get into it. Let's get something straight right away. Using AI doesn't mean you're lazy. It just means you're using the tools available to you. Back in the day, people said calculators were cheating. Then they said Google was cheating. Then Stack Overflow. And now it's AI's turn. But here's the deal. When you use ChatGPT to help you write a bit of code, generate an idea, or even debug something, you are still making the decisions. You still have to understand what's going on. You're still in control. AI doesn't make you a bad programmer. It makes you a more efficient one. Would you call a carpenter bad because he uses power tools instead of carving everything by hand? No, you'd say they're smart for using what works. Let's take a closer look at what Letter did in his video. Okay, so we can basically put here an, uh, some X's for example or whatever. So now we need a player script to move around. So what we are going to be doing is attach a new script, okay, a new empty script and save it into a new folder. Okay, and let's see how exactly we handle this. Now I want you to add a movement script to our character body 2D. Okay, so let's give it a second. And here we start to see some things that could have been made better. Okay, so first of all, we copy this and we just paste it in. Okay, so we have some comments which is amazing. Okay, let's save the script by the way. And we also have some notes. Make sure your project presenting to the map has the following actions. Yes, all go to projects have this by default. Um, well, here it actually tells us these are pre configured by default in Godot, but you can double check just in case. Okay, quite interesting note over. Okay, let's pause the video here and take a closer look at what Letter is doing. You see, he doesn't just copy and paste the code, he reads the notes to understand what's happening. But wait, there's more. Let's continue. There. Um, now, here there are some problems. I believe this should still work if we run the sim. This does work, as you can see. Now, the biggest problem with this is the following. The code is trash, literally, okay? It could have been made a thousand times better. Well, not maybe a thousand times better. But first of all, here we're using an export variable to manage the speed. This is something that it's only used for when you're a beginner, you maybe don't understand that much variables, but in 99% of cases, I hate using export annotations unnecessarily, okay? Uh, I prefer much more to just assign everything in code because what happens is that, okay, you set speed to 300, but when you look at your script, speed is 200, so it doesn't make sense. I don't like having the values in two places. I just have, love to have it in one. So I will create this as uh, as not as an export variable and also speed is actually a constant its value is not being changed so in reality this should be a constant and constants are displayed on this case like this all in capital letters the thing is that you cannot export constants so i understand why a goal a chat between made it and a variable okay but once again it would not it would not have been the best thing now also here ChatGPT is using static typing here and it's not using static typing over here. This doesn't make sense. Um, in reality here, what we should use is an infer type, which in this case, by doing this, is the same thing as doing this. But what happens here is that this is redundant, since we are also here putting vector2, so it doesn't make any sense. 
So once again, ChatBT is kind of correct, but incorrect at the same time. If you use static typing here, here you should you should use either infer types or static typing. Now in order to read the input, this is let's say correct, but not correct at all. Instead of doing it like this, what ChatGPT should be using is input dot get vector. Okay, and here. Okay, let's quickly pause the video again. What letter is about to do here next is really important. And I don't think he did anything wrong. And actually, I think this is the way you should be using AI to help you write your code. Let's continue watching. We should provide the corresponding axis. And let's actually try to do it directly on ChatGPT. So let's sell it. Um, so here, basically, I told it to use input.vector, which is the, cor the, the correct function. And here, it, it even just tells us absolutely using input that vector makes the code cleaner and more readable. So if it makes the code cleaner and more readable, why are you doing all these things over here? I don't understand that. So once again, here we got the new code. Let's control. Let's press Control A to select everything. Control B to paste. And let's also fix this again. So this should be a constant, and this should be speed like this, and this should be like this. Okay. There we go. Now the code, I believe, is mostly perfect, okay? You see, it's not just about copying and pasting code. It's about understanding. And a big shout out to Letter Corporation for sharing his knowledge. Okay, you might think, well, Letter already knows how to code, so it's easy for him to fix it. Trust me, he also talks about that as well in his video. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. I will leave a link to it in the description. And Letter, if you happen to see this video, you do great work. I definitely sub. So keep doing such an amazing job. Now, this is the part I really love. Because let's be honest, in Godot, there's GDScript, input events, animation trees, signals, and a lot more. There's a lot to learn. And when you're just starting out, AI can be like having that personal tutor who never gets tired of your stupid question and is always ready to explain things in at least 10 different ways. Want to understand what physics process does? There you go, in just a couple seconds. Want help writing that first platformer controller? Or want to know why your player is flying off the screen? AI can help with that. But, and this is really important, you only learn if you're curious. You still have to ask questions. You still have to test things. And most importantly, you still have to think. So no, using AI doesn't stop you from learning. In fact, if you use it the right way, it supercharges your learning. Now here's where AI completely falls short. Creativity, design, vision, tone, and style. You can ask ChatGPT to help you code a platformer or generate ideas, but it's not going to come up with your unique concept. Take for instance, Rebel Groove Social Block, a rhythm game I made set in a dystopian city where dancing is forbidden. Flappy Flight, a twist on the classic Flappy Bird formula, where you're piloting a plane running out of fuel, collecting fuel stars to keep flying, and balance greed with survival. Or Don't Fall, a game where you navigate through a dark, dreary wood with a haunting whisper, Don't Fall, guiding you on your journey. You get the point? These are not just games, they're expressions of my creativity and imagination. AI can assist in building mechanics, but the core idea, the heart and soul of the game, that comes from you. The point is, AI can help you build, but it can't dream for you. AI can give you structure, it can fill in the gap, but it can't feel what you feel. That spark, that drive, that moment when something clicked, that's all you. So no, AI can't ever replace human creativity. At best, all it does is amplify it. Just like NZT48 in Limitless, the real power isn't the pill, or in our case, AI. The real power is how you use it. Some people take shortcuts with AI. Some people use it to spam out generic games or shovelware. But others, they use it responsibly. They use it to learn faster, to build things they couldn't build alone and to bring their visions to life. Now here's the thing, those are the people who I believe are destined to come out on top. Not because they rely on AI, but because they partner with it. They manage to stay in control. They keep learning and keep growing. Just like Bradley Cooper in Limitless, you can go from stuck to unstoppable. But it's not magic. 
It's you plus the right tools plus the willingness to grow. So let's get back to that comment. Using AI means you're a bad programmer. What? No way. Using AI means you're adapting. It means you're learning. It means you're using every tool available to make something awesome. AI isn't a cheat code. It's more like a booster. Like coffee to your code. Or if you want to be even more dramatic, NZT48 for game development. But only if you use it the right way. So to everyone out there, especially beginner, don't be afraid to use AI, but also don't let it do all the thinking either. Learn, create, fail, and try again. That's what real developers do, with or without AI. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you liked this video, why not give it a like or subscribe? It really helps me grow my channel. Or just drop a comment telling me what weird idea you want to build next. Or maybe even ask ChatGPT for some help. Until next time, happy coding and I'll see you in the comments. Wait, 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 I almost forgot. I recently made this poll on my channel and Godot 4 built a totally modular asteroid game with composition is currently winning. So I'm doing the research and I'm thinking we should look at the asteroid recharge game because this is where I think composition and decoupling would really shine. But it does take a lot of work to make this type of tutorial. So stay tuned. It's coming soon. Laters. This has been Diragu Game.